Uh, so hello everyone, um, I'm Akira, and um, today I'll be going over um, a few solutions um, that are mainly like privacy focused or cryptography focused for minimizing MEV. Um, this is a current work in progress that we're doing as part of a Flashbots grant. So if you have any feedback, any questions, you can always just reach out to us. Um, and also this kicks off the whole like privacy part of the talks today. So we'll also have a panel afterwards. So you can ask your questions during that time as well. Uh, so I guess a quick recap of what we what was discussed over the day over the other talks. Um, so MEV is very is a very multifaceted problem. Uh, it manifests itself in different ways. Um, and as such, we have different ways to solve it. Um, and keeping that in mind, we know that and not all MEV is bad. In fact, some of it is just going to be uh, as part of you know building financial applications. Um, and the goal of this talk is mainly to discuss um, how to use cryptography um, in order to solve MEV. Um, and we'll look at ways in which people can try to use ME, uh, sorry, try to use these solutions today in their in their applications, or whether or not it might make sense to just have this as, as like a layer one um, solution. And then later on in the panel, we'll dive more into um, that aspect as well. Um, in addition, we'll like briefly go over some uh, directions that we're pursuing as part of this research as well. That's way more experimental. I'm not sure if we'll have time for that, but yeah. So in the context of uh, MEV, what exactly do we mean by privacy? Um, so there's a few considerations that you, you might can that you might want to think about when thinking about privacy in this context. Um, so this is the concept of pre-trade privacy, which is um, if your uh, sorry, which is the context of uh, trade. So you send the trade to be spent, um, but Oh no, freezing. Okay, so fail trade privacy is um, if you're sending a bid, then and it's a losing bid, then you don't want your um, you don't want the mempool to see that. Um, the concept of a pre trade privacy, which is slightly subtle, is that um, you don't want uh, a failed transaction to be seen in, in the in the mempool. Um, so the subtle between these two, uh, the differences between these two are, are very subtle, uh, which is why I kind of pose up there. And then the concept of complete privacy, which is the most desirable one, which is probably what most people think is um, when like everything is hidden from the mempool until it's time to execute the transaction. Um, and the focus of today's talk is effectively on complete privacy solutions. Um, I guess a sh very short overview of the design space for just solving MEV in general. There is the um, side of using uh, more like math and economics for so solving these problems. And I think later on in, in the talk and earlier in the, in the day, people discussed those kinds of solutions. Um, and then today we'll be focused mainly on uh, the cryptography side of things. So there's quite a few different uh, solutions that people have come up with over you know, the past years um, to solve front running and MEV in Ethereum. We'll briefly go over each um, solution. And I guess as, as part of this being an ongoing work, if you have any more suggestions or um, ways to combine these, just, just reach out. Um, so first we'll go into commitments. Um, cryptographic commitments are a really easy tool to use for um, trying to solve uh, front running for your application. Um, so briefly, you can commit to a message um, and then later on you, you reveal it whenever you want. And so in a, in a specific context, what you do is you would commit to a transaction and then once it's added to a block, you can reveal the, the transaction later and then uh, have it execute. Uh, the main issue with doing this is that uh, you need like an extra block delay. 
because now you need to execute your transaction, which is not the best in terms of user experience for the users of the application implementing this. But a good side of using this is that you can, it, there's typically libraries that allow you to just do this as a drop-in replacement. However, due to this like one, one block delay, it's really deployed in practice. So from commitments, uh, you can use ZKPs. Um, and I guess most people here are familiar with ZKPs. Very briefly, um, it allows you to prove statements without revealing um, important details of, about that statement. So in this case, um, you might want to prove something about a transaction such that it's, it's within a specific, uh, the gas price is within a specific range um, and that it's a valid transaction. Um, but you don't want to reveal the transaction on chain because we're trying to make it such that uh, people can't uh, you know, arbitrage and kinds of transactions. Um, and the nice thing about ZKPs is that they're quite flexible. So you can sort of aggregate many transactions together and prove them in a ZKP. Um, and typically we've seen this applied at both like the protocol layers um, and like layer one blockchains and at application layers in the forms of different L2s. Um, and they tend to not have a significant of a delay as the commitments that we just looked at. Um, and there's also a lot of tools for, for using CKPs as well. So the next one is uh, time lock encryption, um, which is also just an application of using commitment schemes. So uh, in, your, in the vanilla uh, commitment schemes, what you do is uh, you uh, commit to a message and then you refill it whenever you want. Um, but with time lock encryption, uh, there's like a set date by which you have to reveal the message um, or set time specifically. Um, and using time lock encryption, you can like build um, these time capsules um, in such a way that uh, you, you need it to solve a, a puzzle and the puzzle will reveal the commitments. Uh, and this allows you to <coughs> effectively uh, uh, prevent front running in your application. Um, and this hasn't seen widespread deployments, but it does work at both like layer one and at the pro protocol layers. And it has like the similar, similar issues as commitments in terms of uh, the delay it provides to users. Um, and the tooling for this isn't as uh, ready compared to like CKPs, but uh, yeah. So then this threshold decryption, um, which I think was brought up earlier today in a, in a separate talk. Um, so in threshold decryption, you have forms of uh, miners or, or validators that um, have each have a, a share of a private key for, for decrypting messages that users um, encrypt. And depending on whether you're an approval work or proof of stake system, um, there is sort of delays on when, when you can decrypt these transactions. Um, most schemes I've seen usually have a, at least a one block delay on executing the transaction because you have to decrypt the transaction. Um, and as such, usually this is done at L1, but um, as we'll see later, there's an attempt at doing this um, at the application layer so that it's a drop-in replacement uh, or a drop-in addition to your DAP while you're, you're building um, so then there's SGX, um, which is also another way uh, that's been posed to solve MEV. And SGX is a technology by Intel in which you can store data in these like secure enclaves and the, the data can't leave um, these enclaves. So um, <clears throat> all the computation and accessing the data has to be done within these enclaves. And it's isolated from the rest of the OS. Um, so uh, pretty much what you need to do is um, find a way to sort of uh, split up the encryption key for accessing the enclaves. Um, and that's how you would do your, uh, your, your computation. So uh, practically, 
how this is used for solving MEP is that um, you can verify um, all sorts of complex statements like the validity of transactions and blocks and stuff like that. Um, so what you do is you would split up this private key that we use to sign messages to the Enclave. Um, and then the SGX can ascertain the validity of um, the transactions. And then depending on whether you're in a proof of work or a proof of stake system, you either get um, the unencrypted transaction data or a proof um, that your transactions are valid. And then you can use that as part of um, consensus. And depending on how it's instantiated, you might get uh, just as good as latency as like a, the current like flashbots setup. Um, one of the downsides though, is that you do need to rely on Intel uh, for being an honest manufacturer. Um, although there are some attempts at making some open source versions of this kind of tech. Uh, and lastly, there's MPC, which is, um, you can kind of consider it as a software only version of, of SGX. Um, which allows you to uh, compute arbitrary functions without knowing the inputs. In a sense, threshold decryption is an instance of MPC. Um, and more famously, I guess, MPC is, is known for being inefficient. Um, but depending on the constraints of the system, um, it might not be as inefficient as one might think. However, it does introduce more trust assumptions on node behavior that might not be desirable depending on your use case. Um, so I guess to, we're nearing the end of the talk. Um, some current work that we're looking into, um, in addition to those other uh, solutions, is the use of malleable cryptography. Um, so very briefly, malleable cryptography lets you um, do transformations on encrypted um, data. So the idea here would be to use something like some homomorphic encryption um, that will allow you to morph uh, encrypted transaction um, so that you, you can probably still do some uh, execution on it if it's possible within uh, like an efficient amount of time. Um, and then the other uh, primitive we've been looking at is called order revealing encryption, which is mainly has been applied in the database search domain for providing um, searching functions over uh, encrypted databases. And we think this uh, might be a promising way for providing similar functionality for uh, encrypted transactions. It does um, it does kind of reduce so far from our work. It does kind of reduce to the like threshold decryption case. So we're not sure if it's particularly useful, but we do have a write up um, that I can share more widely if you're interested. Um, and something else that we're working on is um, we're trying to look at using MPC for providing complete privacy and flashbots. So in the same way that MEV SGX provides um, complete privacy using M uh, SGX and, and Flashbots, we're looking at using some off-the-shelf MPC frameworks for um, towards that goal as well. Uh, so I guess uh, that's the end of the talk. And so it's time for the panel.